The nuclear program of Iran is an ongoing scientific effort by Iran to research nuclear technology that can be used to make nuclear weapons. Iran has several research sites, two uranium mines, a research reactor, and uranium processing facilities that include three known uranium enrichment plants. Iran's nuclear program was launched in the 1950s with the help of the United States under the Atoms for Peace program, and in 1970, Iran ratified the Non-Proliferation Treaty NPT, limiting its nuclear program to peaceful use, and making its nuclear program subject to inspection by the International Atomic Energy Agency IAEA. Western cooperation ceased following the 1979 Iranian Revolution, after which Iran continued its nuclear program on a clandestine basis. In the 2000s, the revelation of Iran's clandestine uranium enrichment program raised concerns that the program might be intended for non-peaceful uses. The IAEA launched an investigation in 2003 after an Iranian dissident group revealed undeclared nuclear activities carried out by Iran. In 2006, because of Iran's non-compliance with its NPT obligations, the United Nations Security Council demanded that Iran suspend its enrichment programs. In 2007, the United States National Intelligence Estimate NEET stated that Iran halted an alleged active nuclear weapons program in fall 2003. In November 2011, the IAEA reported credible evidence that Iran had been conducting experiments aimed at designing a nuclear bomb until 2003, and that research may have continued on a smaller scale after that time. On 1 May 2018 the IAEA reiterated its 2015 report, saying it had found no credible evidence of nuclear weapons activity in Iran after 2009. Iran's first nuclear power plant, the Busha-I reactor, was completed with major assistance from the Russian government agency Rosatom and officially opened on 12 September 2011. The Russian engineering contractor Atomenergoprom said the Busha nuclear power plant would reach full capacity by the end of 2012. Iran has also announced that it is working on a new 360 MW Darkovan nuclear power plant, and that it will seek more medium-sized nuclear power plants and uranium mines in the future. As of 2015, Iran's nuclear program has cost $100 billion in lost oil revenues and lost foreign direct investment because of international sanctions $500 billion, when including other opportunity costs. Up to February 2019, the IAEA had certified that Iran was still abiding by the International Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action of 2015, however, in July 2019, after the United States withdrew from the JCPOA, the IAEA stated that Iran had breached the agreement. Iran has, since breaching the JCPOA, embroiled itself in controversy with half of the JCPOA signatories. Because a November 2020 IAEA report said that Iran had further developed centrifuge technology, the novelty of which was explicitly prohibited by the JCPOA. The report also said that Tehran holds more than 12 times the amount of enriched uranium permitted under the JCPOA, and that work has also begun on the construction of new underground facilities close to Natanz, its main enrichment facility. Until 2021 Iran always insisted that its nuclear program was for peaceful purposes, and there was even a fatwa by Ayatollah Khamenei against producing nuclear weapons. But in an interview in November 2021, on the anniversary of the assassination of Mohsen Fakhrizadeh, a former head of the Iranian Atomic Energy Organization mentioned the country's growth, involving satellites, missiles, and nuclear weapons, and said that although Iran's stance on nuclear weapons being haram was quite clear, Fakhrizadeh had created this system. 1950s and 1960s. Iran's nuclear program was launched in the 1950s with the help of the United States. On 5 March 1957, a proposed agreement for cooperation in research in the peaceful uses of atomic energy was announced under the Eisenhower administration's Atoms for Peace program. In 1967, the Tehran Nuclear Research Center TNRC, was established, run by the Atomic Energy Organization of Iran AEOI. The TNRC was equipped with a 5-megawatt nuclear research reactor supplied by U.S. company American Machine and Foundry, which was fueled by highly enriched uranium. Iran signed the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty NPT, in 1968 and ratified it in 1970, making Iran's nuclear program subject to IAEA verification.
Iran signed the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty NPT, in 1968 and ratified it in 1970, making Iran's nuclear program subject to IAEA verification. A central treaty organization Nuclear Sciences Institute was moved from Baghdad to Tehran after Iraq left Chento. The participation of the United States and Western European governments in Iran's nuclear program continued until the 1979 Iranian Revolution that toppled the last Shah of Iran. Following the revolution, most of the international nuclear cooperation with Iran was cut off. In 1981, Iranian officials concluded that the country's nuclear development should continue. Negotiations took place with France in the late 1980s and with Argentina in the early 1990s, and agreements were reached. In the 1990s, Russia formed a joint research organization with Iran, providing Iran with Russian nuclear experts and technical information. 1990-2002 From the beginning of the 1990s, Russia formed a joint research organization with Iran called Persepolis which provided Iran with Russian nuclear experts and technical information. Five Russian institutions, including Roscosmos, helped Iran improve its missiles. The exchange of technical information with Iran was personally approved by SVR Director Trubnikov. President Boris Yeltsin had a two-track policy, offering commercial nuclear technology to Iran and discussing the issues with Washington. In 1991, France refunded more than $1.6 billion, while Iran remained a shareholder of Eurotif via Safadif. However, Iran refrained from asking for the produced uranium. In 1992, Iran invited IAEA inspectors to visit all the sites and facilities they asked. Director General Blix reported that all activities observed were consistent with the peaceful use of atomic energy. The IAEA visits included undeclared facilities and Iran's nascent uranium mining project at Sahand. In the same year, Argentine officials disclosed that their country had cancelled a sale to Iran of civilian nuclear equipment worth $18 million, under U.S. pressure. In 1995, Iran signed a contract with Rosatom to resume work on the partially complete Busha plant, installing into the existing Busha I building a 915 MWEVVER 1000 pressurized water reactor, with completion expected in 2009. In 1996, the U.S. convinced China to pull out of a contract to construct a uranium conversion plant. However, the Chinese provided blueprints for the facility to the Iranians, who advised the IAEA that they would continue work on the program. IAEA Director Mohammad El Baradei even visited the construction site. The UN Security Council has passed eight resolutions on Iran's nuclear program. Resolution 1696, the 31st of July 2006, demanded that Iran suspend its uranium enrichment activities. Resolution 1737, the 23rd of December 2006, imposed sanctions after Iran refused to suspend its enrichment activities, required Iran to cooperate with IAEA. Resolution 1747, the 24th of March 2007, expanded the list of sanctioned Iranian entities. Resolution 1803, the 3rd of March 2008, extended those sanctions to additional persons and entities. Resolution 1835, the 27th of September 2008, reaffirmed the preceding four resolutions. Resolution 1929, the 9th of June 2010, imposed a complete arms embargo on Iran, banned Iran from any activities related to ballistic missiles, authorized the inspection and seizure of shipments violating these restrictions, extended the asset freeze to the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps in the Islamic Republic of Iran Shipping Lines IRISL, and established a panel of experts whose mandate was extended three times by Resolution 1984, the 8th of June 2011, Resolution 2049, the 7th of June 2012, and Resolution 2105, the 5th of June 2013. Iran says that its program is solely for peaceful purposes and consistent with the NPT, 449. The IAEA Board of Governors has found Iran in non-compliance with its NPT safeguards agreement, concluding in a rare non-consensus decision with 12 abstentions, that Iran's past safeguards, breaches, and failures constituted non-compliance with its safeguards agreement in the decision, the IAEA Board of Governors also concluded that the concerns raised fell within the competence of the UN Security Council. 
Most experts recognize that non-compliance with an NPT safeguards agreement is not equivalent to a violation of the NPT or does not automatically constitute a violation of the NPT itself. The IAEA does not make determinations regarding compliance with the NPT, and the UN Security Council does not have a responsibility to adjudicate treaty violations. Dr. James Acton, an associate in the Nonproliferation Program at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, has said the 2010 NPT Review Conference could recognize that non-compliance with safeguards agreements would violate Article 3 of the NPT. Director of the Australian Nonproliferation and Safeguards Organization and then Chairman of IAEA's Standing Advisory Group on Safeguards Implementation John Carlson wrote in considering the case of Iran that, formerly IAEA Board of Governors bogged decisions concern compliance with safeguards agreements, rather than the NPT as such, but in practical terms non-compliance with a safeguards agreement constitutes non-compliance with the NPT. A September 2009 Congressional Research Service paper said, whether Iran has violated the NPT is unclear. A 2005 U.S. State Department report on compliance with arms control and nonproliferation agreements concluded, based on its analysis of the facts and the relevant international laws, that Iran's extensive failures to make required reports to the IAEA made clear that Iran has violated Article 3 of the NPT and its IAEA safeguards agreement.